Lesson 18.4 Jihad Jihad is commanded in Islam for two reasons. A. The propagation of Islam throughout the world to face the oppressive and tyrannical powers that prevent people by force from knowing Islam and the free conviction of its message and prohibit them from implementing the justice of Islam. B. The protection of the Islamic society from aggressors, security threats and any entity that fights against its faith. Jihad is the highest rank in Islam. Fighting against unbelievers and non-Muslims who fight Islam is a communal obligation on all Muslims. However, if the enemy enters the country, jihad becomes an individual obligation on every Muslim and those recruited for this purpose. Arribat is to be in guard and defend in frontier points of danger and watch out to know the plans of the enemy. This is also a communal obligation and one of the most gracious deeds. To prepare a military force both technically and financially is a communal obligation and a necessity that precedes jihad. Conditions for jihad are sincere intention, Muslim leadership, obedience to the leadership and the parents approval to participate. The warrior should adhere to firmness, steadfastness and patience. Evidence of Quran and Sunnah the legality and merit of jihad. Allah says, This means and fight them until there is no more fitna, disbelief and polytheism, i.e. worshipping others besides Allah. And the religion worship will all be for Allah alone. But if they cease worshipping others besides Allah, then certainly Allah is all seer of what they do. Allah says, this means verily Allah loves those who fight in his cause in rows as if they were a solid structure. Allah says, This means permission to fight is given to those, i.e. believers against disbelievers, who are fighting them. And because they, believers, have been wronged, and surely Allah is able to give them, believers, victory. Those who have been expelled from their homes unjustly only because they said, Our Lord is Allah, for had it not been that Allah checks one set of people by means of another, monasteries, churches, synagogues and mosques, wherein the name of Allah is mentioned much, would surely have been pulled down. Verily, Allah will help those who help his cause. Truly, Allah is all strong, almighty. Allah says, this means and fight against the mushrikun, polytheists, pagans, idolaters, disbelievers in the oneness of Allah, collectively as they fight against you collectively. Allah says, this means verily Allah has purchased of the believers their lives and their properties, for the price that theirs shall be the paradise. They fight in Allah's cause, so they kill others and are killed. It is a promise in truth which is binding on him in the Torah, and in the Injil Gospel and the Quran and who is truer to his covenant than Allah then rejoice in the bargain which you have concluded that is the supreme success Allah says this means O you who believe shall I guide you to a commerce that will save you from a painful torment that you believe in Allah and his messenger Muhammad peace be upon him and that you strive hard and fight in the cause of Allah with your wealth and your lives that will be better for you if you but know if you do so he will forgive you your sins and admit you into gardens under which rivers flow and pleasant dwelling in gardens of Aden paradise that is indeed the great success Allah says this means Think not of those who are killed in the way of Allah as dead. Nay, they are alive with their Lord, and they have provision. They rejoice in what Allah has bestowed upon them of his bounty. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, The example of a mujahid in Allah's cause, and Allah knows better who really strives in his cause, is like a person who fasts and prays continuously. Allah guarantees that he will admit the Mujahid in his cause into paradise if he is killed. Otherwise he will return him to his home safely with rewards and war booty. Allah's messenger peace be upon him said, 
If one is wounded in Allah's path, he will come on the day of resurrection, with his wound spouting blood having the color similar to blood, but the fragrance like that of musk. He, peace be upon him, also said, if one dies without fighting in the cause of Allah or without believing it to be his duty, he will die with one characteristic of hypocrisy in him. He, peace be upon him, also said, By him in whose hand is Muhammad's life, if it were not to be too hard upon the Muslims, I would not lag behind any expedition which is going to fight in the cause of Allah. But I have neither abundant means to provide them with conveyance, horses, nor all other Muslims have and it will be hard on them to remain behind when I go forth for the jihad. By whom, in whose hand is Muhammad's life, I like to fight in a way of Allah and get martyred, then brought to life to fight again and get martyred, and then brought to life to fight again and get martyred. He, peace be upon him, also said, No servant of Allah, whose feet become dusty in the cause of Allah, will touch the fire of hell. He, peace be upon him, also said, No one who wishes to return to this world after entering paradise, even if he should be given all what the world contains, except a martyr who yearns to return to the world and be killed ten times on account of the dignity that he experiences by virtue of his martyrdom. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, A man said, O Messenger of Allah, guide me to a deed that is equal to jihad. He said, I do not find an act which is equal to it in reward. He then said, Can you continue prayer and fasting unceasingly as long as the Mujahid is fighting in the cause of Allah? He replied, Who can do this? Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, Someone asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, Who is the best man? He answered, A believer who strives in the cause of Allah with his life and his property. The man asked, Who is the next after him? He said, Him who retires into a narrow alley, fears Allah, and safeguards people from his mischief. Ar Ribat. Allah says, This means, O you who believe, endure and be more patient than your enemy, and guard your territory by stationing army units permanently at the places from where the enemy can attack you, and fear Allah so that you may be successful. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Guarding the frontier for a day is better than the world and all that is in it. He, peace be upon him, said, The good deeds of any dead person stop increasing except that of the one who keeps on safeguarding frontiers in the way of Allah because his deeds will go on increasing until the day of resurrection and he will be safe from the trials of the grave. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said one night of guard duty in the cause of Allah the exalted is better than a thousand nights stood in night prayer and days of fasting. He, peace be upon him, also said Two eyes will never be touched by the fire of hell, an eye which weeps out of fear of Allah, and an eye which spends the night guarding for the sake of Allah. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, He who voluntarily keeps guard behind Muslims for the sake of Allah, not being forced to do so by a sultan, his eyes will not see the fires of hell except to fulfill Allah's oath. It was narrated that the Prophet, peace be upon him, commanded a man to guard the Muslim camp in the conquest of Hunayn at night. In the morning, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked him, Did you dismount during the night? The man said, No, except to pray or to relieve myself. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, You have ensured your entry to paradise. No blame will be attached to you, supposing you do not work after it. The Preparation of Military Force Allah says, This means, and make ready against them all you can of power, to threaten the enemy of Allah and your enemy. Uqba ibn Amir al-Juhani, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that he heard the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, saying on the pulpit, Allah says, This means, and make ready against them all you can of power. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Beware strength consists in archery. Beware strength consists in archery. 
Beware, strength consists in archery. The Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Allah Most High will cause three persons to enter paradise for one arrow. The maker, when he has a good motive in making it, the one who shoots it, and the one who hands it. So shoot and ride, but your shooting is dearer to me than your riding. Everything with which a man amuses himself is in vain except three things. A man's training of his horse, his playing with his wife, and his shooting with his bow and arrow. If anyone abandons archery after becoming an adept through distaste for it, it is a blessing he has abandoned, or, he said, for which he has been ungrateful. Conditions of Jihad the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, was asked about one who fights for displaying valor, one who fights out of fanaticism to protect his people, one who fights out of boldness and one who fights to show off, which is regarded in Allah's cause. He said, He who fights so that Allah's word is the superior, strives in the course of Allah, is in Allah's cause. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated, a man came to the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, I pledge allegiance for migration and jihad, seeking Allah's reward. He said, is one from your parents still alive? He said, yes, both of them are alive. He asked, do you seek reward from Allah? He said, yes, the messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, go back to your parents and treat them kindly. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, If a person notices in his rule what he dislikes, he should endure it, because he who departs from that be disobedient to. The Sultan, a hand's breadth, dies like those who had died in the pre-Islamic times.